Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. We mention Tom and Jerry a lot on this show. It's one of the funniest cartoons ever made, they have brilliant comedic timing, and they've been ravaged more times than a dog owner's leg. We've also mentioned The Wizard of Oz a lot. It's one of the great movies, and for a film that's over 80 years old still being referenced and enjoyed by all ages, it's truly the definition of the term timeless. I also love Chip and Dale in Jurassic Park, but just because two things are popular doesn't mean they belong together! Okay, that one kinda does, but this one doesn't! Before meeting Willy Wonka, Robin Hood, and Johnny Quest... Alright, Questketeers! To the quest jet! What? Tom and Jerry had one of the most popular crossovers with The Wizard of Oz. So much so that even spawned a sequel, which I'm sorry to say has no headless mommy. Tom and Jerry! <laughs> Tom and Jerry! <laughs> These totally unnecessary spin-offs have gotten so much attention that people started making their own random crossovers. They're almost taking on a life of their own. But this one was arguably the most popular, showing there is, for whatever reason, an audience for this. So I guess it only makes sense to take a look and see if the attention was warranted at all. Is there anything of redeemable value to this? Or is it the worst Wizard of Oz adaptation since 90% of the other ones? Well, let's see the crossover that launched a million crossovers. This is Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz. Once again, they do the classic Tom and Jerry intro mixed with the intro of whatever movie they're doing a crossover with. Because they always go so well together. Yeah, Disney tried that too and it worked great. <laughs> I believe in America. <laughs> Few people know these three were really good friends, as much as Matt Stone, Trey Parker, and Leo Tolstoy. He really liked Mr. Hankey. It looks like a good voiceover cast, but the credits quickly segue into the madness we're about to experience through most of this. For years, this story has given faithful service to cat, mice, go home movie, you're drunk. We then see the opening animation of our main lead. <laughs> Come on, Toto. Go home, Dorothy, you're drunk. At first it seems to run the same course as the original Wizard of Oz, except everybody looks like a Cuphead boss. I'm alright. Tom, Jerry, thanks ever so much. Something you'll notice very quickly is the animation, while it looks expensive, also looks rushed. Everyone kind of moves like they're on fast forward. Though there's clearly a lot of technique in the color and line work, they still never quite move right. It's... oh, how does one say? How shall one say, Director? Too many frames, your majesty? Exactly. Very well put. I know that sounds silly as Disney uses a lot of frames and in-between animators, but they also know how to keep them mostly still. So while they're not moving much, they still seem alive. Here, they look hyper alive. Like they want to look natural and flowing, but don't know how to do it on such a time crunch. Now Dorothy dear, you always get yourself into a fret over nothing. Now you just help us out today and find yourself a place where you won't get into any trouble. You know, most people don't move like this all the time, always with some sort of hand movement or moving the head this way and talking over and over and over, because if you do, you look like you're modeling a new car. A new car! <laughs> this old incubator's gone bad and we're likely to lose a lot of our chicks. Well, no wonder the farm's in trouble. They have a mouse for an accountant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jer. These answers to everything is always government cheese. The answer is not always government cheese. For a farm concerned about their chick count, they sure are flexible with killing their unhatched ones. Will you promise me something? <laughs> promise me you'll be friends and work together to keep an eye on Dorothy. Uh, ex navy edding along gay. Age or may, old ship bay. I'm sure this song will be just as powerful here as in the original. Somewhere the yeah, it sounds nice, but you know what's missing? Excessive violence. Yeah, no joke, all throughout the entire song, Tom and Jerry bicker, fight, and trip over themselves. Because the song really had no emotional weight without it. It's like the alternate cut of Meet Me in St. Louis, where they drop a piano on her head. Clang, 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 went the trolley. Even if the violence was taken out, I don't like the way this horse is looking at her. His eyes seem to be saying, Oh yeah, Dorothy. I'll take you over the rainbow, show you what way up high really means. But the mean-spirited, I don't think they give her a name in this version, comes to take Toto away. 
I love that this is actually so rushed that not only does she put up little to no fight keeping him, but she accidentally calls the lady a him, and nobody ever fixed it! Uncle Henry, any of them, don't let him take Toto! Well, you have to admit, she is rather mannish. <laughs> Toto is seen as the most dangerous canine on the farm when there's a bulldog named Butch that lives there too. Also, come on, you couldn't have Droopy as Toto. Beep, beep to you too. Tom and Jerry help rescue Toto in this version with actually some pretty inventive slapstick. And you know where they go from here. Dorothy tries running away and comes across a fortune teller who tells her to go back home who will eventually end up being the wizard in her dream or they cut all that. Any I guess her subconscious made up this guy. Three times. Uncle Henry! Horse! Actually, while you're here, can you tell me what's up with this guy? I'll melt your troubles like lemon drops. So Dorothy, Tom, and Jerry all get knocked out and somehow share the exact same dream. So either this is going on or this is going on. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little soul too. <laughs> they of course wake up in the colorful land of Oz as it turns out the munchkins are pretty hardcore. Bats, think about that. The munchkins carry bats. Watch it. There's more where that came from. Is the lollipop guild gonna have to cut a bitch? You must know Dorothy. This munchkin, of course, is Tuffy, who explains what happened to Dorothy. And you know, if you never saw The Wizard of Oz before and this was your introduction to it, how would you react to this? The house you and Dorothy came in landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and then Glinda, the Good Witch of the North, gave Dorothy the ruby slippers. But the Wicked Witch of the West showed up to take the magical ruby slippers. Yeah. Glinda sent Dorothy to the great and powerful Wizard of Oz in the Emerald City. You are insane, this is all insane, and I am never doing edibles again. Here's a fun game. See if you can spot any innuendo when Tuffy offers to come with them. Size. Well, you're only a munchkin. Oh god, that makes it worse. Oh, it's sad, believe me, mister. So he sings about his uh, <clears throat> size problem, as Tom and Jerry agree to let him tag along to see the wizard to get some height. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. You know, there's something so funny just knowing that all the other munchkins are in their home sleeping. The witch is defeated, Dorothy is off, and they kind of just call it a day with no more celebrating. And then they're like, oh, oh, what's all the commotion? Oh, other visitors from the sky. Okay, we did like five song numbers for that redneck girl. We are not doing this shit again. We'll just give it to that Easter egg mouse to perform with no backup. I'm busy trying to figure out why our flowers are looking so flat. Maybe it's that new fertilizer we've been using. I'll admit, it is a little funny that even miles later, Tuffy is still singing that song and they try to shut him up. But I kinda tug at my collar when I see Black Crows in an animated adaptation of an early 40s film. Oh wait, I forgot, it's Tom and Jerry! They've had years of experience with this kind of stuff! What are you nuts? No one goes that way. <laughs> what do you mean? Lots of people go both ways! Okay, the internet already has this clip to play with. I don't think we need any more innuendos. The crows give them the wrong directions, and they stumble across a much more dangerous path. Tell me if you think Tuffy's persistence to keep going is sounding less optimistic and a little more cultish. Follow the yellow brick road? <laughs> Follow the yellow brick road! Follow the yellow brick road! Never stray from the path, Vanessa! That's right, your name is Vanessa now, as am I. They come across the Wicked Witch, though, who finds Dorothy in a lot of cutscenes easing on down the road. The witch tries to figure out how to stop them. Of course, we know she's gonna use the flowers to put them to sleep. I'll turn this pretty dandelions into an avalanche! Or smash them into oblivion! I'll give credit, that is much more of a Tom and Jerry way of doing things. It actually makes me wish there's a little bit more Wizard of Oz logic to this cartoony logic, because you know the witch wouldn't be able to survive this! This isn't over! Look! It's raining her body parts! 
Oh, oh, Tom! Jerry! I hoped I would never see you again! I'm hoping the wizard will give me some brains. I want a heart. And I need some courage. And all Toto and I want is to get back home to Kansas. <laughs> We're clip-noting what was already a heavily clip-noted story. Then I'm sure to get a brain. A heart. A home. Some height! Wait. Oh, I guess my noive doesn't mean dick anymore. Eat shit and die, you gray tone fifle knockoff. Anyway, if they want to be more honest, the lyric should be this. If I only had a script. My balls! Merch rights! They make their way to the Emerald City. Look, there's the penis from the Little Mermaid poster. And like the original, they come across a horse-drawn carriage. Will you take us to see the wizard? The wizard? I can't... Well, yes. An emotionally scatterbrained driver. Do you trim your beard? Trim my beard? I'm gonna cut your head off and bury you! But yes! I've never seen a horse like that before! No, and never will again, I fancy! I'm gonna kill it! It shines purple when it's depressed, so I'm just gonna drop it off at the Swamp of Sadness! <laughs> That's how we laugh at The people in the city look one step away from drinking the green Kool-Aid. We'll see the wizard too, once we give him our souls! Aw, uh, could you put a little more hay in the crotch area for me? It gets a little cold in Oz, if you know what I'm saying. So, is one of the chicks from the farm having this dream too? How does any of this work? As before, the witch appears to threaten them, only this time she holds the broom in a very, um, clips for sale manner. Surrender Dorothy. At least she's forgotten about you two. Oops, my mistake. Okay, that's just funny. As before, they visit the wizard, and I was gonna make a Skeletor melting into a Mars Attacks Martian joke, but the more I look at the top of that head, it's looking a little, um, a tiny, uh, oh, how does one say? How shall one say, Director? Too clitorish, your majesty? Exactly, very well put. As in the original, they have to get the witch's broom before the wizard will grant any of their wishes. And as before, the scarecrow is still packing heat! Witch's castle, one mile. I love of all the things they kept out of this version, they chose that to leave in. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll shoot him! <laughs> I'll fill him with more holes than a shovel on script! What's happened to you? They took my legs off and then threw them over there! Then they took my chest out and threw it over there! Then they took my penis and said they were saving it for a lonely night! Tom and Jerry break loose and run into an Ozigator. Or is it an Ozodile? I have to look at the nose. And they run into a wall! Should I roll the credits? Welcome back! The witch tries to get Dorothy's slippers like in the original, but they up the zapping powers of her slippers just a tiny bit. <laughs> you know, for as pointless as this all is, I will give credit, it feels less like a Tom and Jerry cartoon stuck in the Wizard of Oz, and more like the Wizard of Oz stuck in a Tom and Jerry cartoon. The comedic slapstick still gets a good chuckle every now and then. Do you see that? It's how long you've got to live! I'll come back for you just as soon as those sands run out. We'll still keep it vague how that's going to kill you, but seeing how it's Tom and Jerry, I guess we'll just say, death by bowling ball. I don't know. We get a pretty funny cameo from Butch and Droopy as the guards. He still should have been Toto. You could have called him Droop Droop. Thus Tom and Jerry overhear that water can kill the witch, so they go to an unguarded, unlocked well on her property. That's all levels of odd. Isn't that the equivalent of, like, popsicles being the only thing that can kill you and the only security you have is a sticker on your freezer that says, No eating popsicles! It could kill me, so keep them out of sight! I mean, you know, I know they're here, that's weird, but uh, come on! Just, just, just don't be a dick! Come, come on. They break in and stop the hourglass. I think it just kind of cuts away from it. If she suddenly dies in a few moments, we'll know why. But they come across the guards. Who dares disturb my cookie time? <laughs> Don't make me do my Willy Wonka tunnel monologue! I'm the twin pot it works for a bit, but the witch catches up with them as Tom and Jerry try to get water. What? <laughs> Tommy's got some rage issues. He's one angry bastard. <laughs> that 
That's right, a munchkin invented scotch tape in this reality. Uh, somehow it still makes more sense than that Franco movie. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of spears. Thought you were pretty foxy, didn't you? Can I really make fun of a word for almost sounding like another word? The last to go, we'll see the first four. Ah! That was like five different Tim Curry masks from the movie Legend. And somehow Tim Curry was still more feminine. <laughs> How about a little fire, Scarecrow? You know, I never got that part. Isn't that kind of like setting your car on fire? Tom and Jerry splash the water on the witch though, and even though it's animated, it's still shot from a distance, so you can't make out the effects that aren't there. Confusing. You know the rest. They get the broom, return to the wizard, and remember that suggestive door from the G.I. Joe movie? It's along the same... yeah. And they find out he was a phony the whole time. But he finds a way of giving them the gifts they were looking for, making them realize they had them all along. Some of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. Still a right triangle. If you're gonna be dumb, you might as well be smart. Look, he even gave Tuffy some stilts. <laughs> I'm huge. Do I even need to say anything? The balloon takes off without Dorothy, but he says he can't bring it back because he doesn't know how it works. Well, how the hell was he gonna get her home then? Questions. But Glenda appears via- Fucking bubbles! Can you send me home? You don't need to be helped any longer. You've always had the power to go back to Kansas. Am I the only one that thinks they look like Peter Lorre caricatures in drag? Can you send me home? Silly fool, you always had the power to go back to Kansas. Rick! She taps her heels three times, ends up back home, and it was all a bad dreams. Yeah, plural. Plural bad dreams. You just had a bad dream. And you couldn't forget your old pal Tuffy, could you? Or me, the local haberdasher. If it was a dream, how are a mouse and dog still talking? And why is that horse looking at me? Can wish upon my star. Nay. Tom and Jerry believe Dorothy's story though and try to act out that they went through it too. And if you didn't know the story they were acting out, you'd look at them like someone lobotomized your best friend too. Tom and Jerry meet awkward silence. Something happened! <laughs> <laughs> they fight some more, the end credits roll, and everybody who never heard of the Wizard of Oz thinks they're stoned out of their minds. So there it is, Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz. An awful Wizard of Oz adaptation, but kind of a funny Tom and Jerry cartoon. The special is forgivingly short, clocking in at under an hour. It focuses more on trying to tell a funny Tom and Jerry adventure rather than a faithful Wizard of Oz adventure. And when it does that, it's surprisingly alright. The slapstick has an understanding of making them feel solid so the pain seems harsher and funnier. Tom's screams sound eerily close to his original screams. <laughs> and the timing, for the most part, is pretty damn good. Where it fails, not surprisingly, is the Wizard of Oz stuff. It's just not a good adaptation because most of what made the story so special is kept in the background. But that's kind of what makes it an amusing Tom and Jerry special. There's not much focus on The Wizard of Oz. Especially when compared to something like the Willy Wonka crossover. So yeah, I guess it's not good as it is pointless and the Oz stuff falls flat, but it still got a few laughs out of me. Which after this is a ton more than what I was expecting. So it's not technically good, but it's not nearly as bad as you would think. Take it for what it's worth and find out if this acid trip over the rainbow is for you. And we can hope there won't be any more random crossovers from what the hell are you doing, Anna Barbera? I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember how many wrestling ones are there? <laughs> I'm huge. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Helen Keller International is this week's charity. Helen Keller International saves and improves the sight and lives of the world's vulnerable by combating the causes and consequences of blindness, poor health, and malnutrition. They envision a world where no one suffers from preventable or treatable blindness or low vision, no one suffers from malnutrition, and fewer people suffer loss of their productive years due to disability and premature death. 
to accomplish this, they build the capacity of local government, nonprofit, and private sector systems, promoting the development of sustained, large-scale programs that deliver effective solutions to preventable blindness and malnutrition. If you look at their website, you can not only see all the places they travel to, but also all the good people they help at those places, making sure they live good, prosperous lives. Click on the link and see what you can do to help so many.